At the beginning of December last year, I was out and about, and I had a brick wall moment. Now, I know you, you know what a brick is, you know what a wall is, you know what a moment is. I don't know if you're familiar with these words used in this combination, but I'm sure you understand the concept, and it's basically when the thing you set out to do or rather, when you realize that the thing you set out to do cannot be done in the way you want it to be done. And that's usually due to uh, circumstances, a sudden change of circumstances, and uh, everything gets mixed up, and yeah, you know, you can't do what you plan to do. Over the years, I have had the fortune to be able to study this whole process and I've realized there are the uh, situations in which um, you're there with a wonderful plan, a genius plan, but suddenly you realize it's just not going to happen. Well, those situations can be divided into, uh, shall we say, two categories. And on the one side, you have the situations which are beyond your control. So the reason you cannot carry out a particular plan um, is simply because something, some external force adjusts the situation in such a manner that you just cannot progress. So for example, especially if you live in Amsterdam longer than a, a month, you're cycling or even walking. At some point you will need to stop because a bridge is open. So. It's not your fault. You cannot progress. Or one example, and I am sure others are familiar with this. Um, I was jogging away in Wester Park, absolutely minding my own business. And this um, fluffy white dog came out of nowhere and began yapping at my feet, yapping and yapping, you know, just making a, a terrible racket. And somewhere along the process, um, the dog was kicked. And uh, um, I think before you get too judgmental, especially pet lovers, just realize there is a very big difference between somebody who says, oh, there's a dog, I'm going to kick it, and somebody who says, oh, my goodness, I just kicked a dog. And it's this latter version that applies to my particular situation. So. Basically, what happened is I'm sort of ignoring this yapping dog, and it came between my foot and the free air that, that my foot should have gone into, and it um, went up into the air, and it landed reasonably well, um, well enough to come back for another round, but that's a whole other story. Um, the thing is, this and the open bridge are examples of when... Uh, external forces interrupt your plans. On the other side, you have when the reason your plan doesn't work is because you have forgotten something or didn't do something or, you know, it's, you were in control of some action and, um, and that led to the end of the plan for your plan. So for me, what happened, my brick wall moment was caused by, it was a very simple thing, it wasn't, a, it's nothing major. It, I had decided to go out and take photographs. And as far as photography is concerned, I have these, I don't know why, phases when I take lots of pictures. The last phase was between 2015 and 2018, where I was very active on um, Instagram. And I take lots and lots of photographs of Amsterdam or wherever I happen to be. And so the other beginning of December, I decided, oh yeah, I'm going out. And remember, this is December. So I go out at about four, quarter past four. And very quickly, I'm out there and I realize, oh, this isn't good. Uh, the light has gone. <laughs> it's winter and I don't have a tripod. So how am I going to deal with this long exposure business? And um, for a moment, I thought, oh, okay, just be outside, walk around, and whatever. But I, then another part of me said, 
yeah but you've taken the camera out so you can't just you've got to do something and then I don't know how it happened or why it just I I mean I was aware of a handheld long exposure would be a bit fuzzy because I mean I could, can't hold a camera perfectly still for 20 seconds and um, then I thought okay what happens if you don't worry about that if you just actually exaggerate the whole movement and so I began to take these long exposures but I was jiggling the camera all over the place <laughs> I don't know why I just it just suddenly I thought hey and so I did a couple and I thought hey I looked at them and I thought ah, uh, that's the good thing about digital photography I could see them and I thought this is interesting and so I continued and for uh, the next two days uh, when it was dark I went out and I did some stuff and so the result is are these photographs which have been sort of merged into this film and um, that to me was uh, I hope I get this right <laughs> that to me was uh, how you solve a brick wall moment or for me um, when I'm stuck I realize and this is just age and experience that have taught me this the best thing to do is just surrender to sort of say okay accept this is what it is um, in earlier days I could get really obsessive about having a particular result and spent <laughs> very many hours just you know basically pushing against a brick wall and until something or somebody showed me that there wasn't there was an alternative yeah, so that's what happened in the case of my brick wall moment at the beginning of December. I surrendered and ended up with these images. Uh, whether they're, <laughs> they're not important, but I must say I had uh, quite a lot of fun. Um, just, you know that flow thing where you're just suddenly you're doing something, you don't even know what you're doing, you're just allowing instinct to uh, let you run and uh, yeah that's a good feeling yeah um this also brings it suddenly makes me think of something the surrender the idea of you have a brick wall moment what do you do about it and i said about age and experience giving me some perhaps something of an advantage but back in the day, <laughs> there are a couple of examples, sort of, of is a joint example, shall I say. Uh, I worked in a particular office, architectural office, very uh, international office, and um, you had the most incredible people there. I mean, there were people, I would just be gobsmacked at the way they could see particular things within an architectural context I, I could barely keep up sometimes and um, I spent a lot of time <laughs> I have to be honest in terror so I had I, I would often know what to say and have a solution but I just couldn't get it out I don't I don't know I had chickenitis major chickenitis and uh, so often I'd have these brick wall moments. There was one that happened at least three times where I'm at the drawing table with this roll of sketch paper and I'm meant to sort of, I've got a piece of the project to work on. And uh, uh, the first one was the f when I went to the office, we, I, my first uh, uh, job was on this competition for a, a redevelopment for a part of Paris, just big thing. It's lots of big thinking here. <laughs> so I had to work out something. I was just, I knew I had to work out something really good because at the end of each day, there was this long wall. We'd pin up all our thinking on the wall and then our boss would come. <laughs> you could get slaughtered. <laughs> So uh, that worried me. I didn't want to get a public tongue lashing. <laughs> and, uh, but I, that would cause me to freeze. So um, the lady, my colleague, she sat, or st sat, drew in front of me. 
sometimes I'd be stuck and I'd be doodling along the top of the sketch paper and writing lists, sort of instruction lists of do this, do that, do that, and you would to try and kickstart myself into action. Nothing would happen. And then she would just by coincidence turn around and say, oh, hey, could you come and look at this and what do you think about that? And we'd suddenly have this conversation and the pressure to do something would just change because I think I felt very safe talking with her, so I'd, we'd discuss whatever it was. And that would free me up to go back uh, to the sketch room. Suddenly, I'd, oh yeah, blah, 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 I could sort of put out the idea. So you had that one, but there was another one. <laughs> I referred to the uh, drawings pinned up on the wall. So during those moments, those presentations, <laughs> I would always stay as far away as possible from... <laughs> I had sort of been in a far corner, don't even look at me. I would, I'd sort of observe and try to keep out of anything. And the sad thing is, as I said before, quite often I had quite reasonable solutions. But I just, you know, they just wouldn't come out. And the boss, because he was this, he was sort of like an eagle. He made me thought, think of an eagle. And he could terrify people and uh, it could explode <laughs> if he thought your thinking wasn't up to scratch. So he'd present, it was everybody sweating. And if you got a sort of, uh, if your presentation led to further conversation, you were always very happy. Um, anyway, so most of the time I kind of avoided saying anything, I just watched. But there's one time I was there, I was looking at something and I. I was at the wall and I was looking at something and he just came up <laughs> and I sort of thought, oh shit, I can't, uh, there's no escape. And he didn't, he, he just started talking about the whole design. He was just saying a few things and he asked me about certain things. And one of the things he asked me is that, I mean, if you lived there, how would you see it? How would you this? and, and I don't know, it was an odd question, but I told him the way I thought I saw it, the way relative to this competition, what we were trying to do. So I told him all this, and then he said, he said thanks. He said, oh, by the way, you know that if you have ideas in your head and they don't come out, they're pretty useless. And he sort of went off, and I thought about that. And I realized, I mean, not just this moment, but due to other interactions with, with people. Whenever I do have that brick wall moment, um, it's almost as if you have to sort of let go of, um, or I have to let go of, I don't even know what it is, It's because it's my head. It's not as if somebody else is smothering my thinking process, it's me, you know, and so why do I block? And it's, um, I just found out that the only way to get away with anything is just accept, okay, I don't know anything about this. Let me, uh, let me just trust myself to see what comes up and not be afraid and not uh, pre-cancel or pre-censor whatever ideas are there. So yeah, this may have been a bit of a, um, <laughs> I hope it's clear what I'm trying to say. It's that at least for myself, uh, when hitting a brick wall, I let go. And uh, I actually, I mean, look, of course I'm going to say it works for me, <laughs> but it really does. Seriously, it's, um, I find it's, it's, it's just that sort of letting go and trusting yourself. Uh, uh, I don't want to sound preachy, but if I sound preachy, hallelujah, <laughs> so be it. But it really is about letting go, trusting yourself. Um, sometimes ideas are really scary. You know, I have, I'm thinking, isn't that really stupid? I, I don't know why I think that. It is, that it's especially if I don't have another reference. If you have an idea and you haven't really, you can't find an, another version of it somewhere else. So, so it's like, oh, am I nuts? At those moments, when the brick wall is there, surrender. And I guarantee you, <laughs> but don't get in touch with me if it doesn't work. But. I generally guarantee you, you will have success. Hit a brick wall, surrender, and see what comes up. On that note, on that very, <laughs> on that very wise note, uh, goodbye, and uh, talk to you next time. Co to
Natália, daj opýtanie. Natália, čo mi gadá?